everybody, and welcome back to the Ultimate Fashion History Speaking of Fashion series, a series of short videos aimed at new fashion students, based on some of the questions and confusion my own fashion students sometimes express. In this episode, however, it might also be useful to some fashion writers and fashion bloggers, because this time we're going to look at the difference between glam rock and new romanticism. I was inspired to put this video together after reading so often of how Duran Duran and the Human League and Adamant and even Boy George are perfect examples of 1980s glam rock. But of course they're not. They are not glam rockers. These folk all fall under that big theatrical umbrella of new romanticism. And so in this video we're going to look at what makes glam rock and what makes new romantic. Glam rock started in the early 1970s in Britain. It is also known as glitter rock, and it was sort of a reaction to the bleak socio-economic landscape of 1970s Britain, but it was also a rejection of that very ponderous, grown-up, progressive rock uh, from the likes of Pink Floyd. Of course, David Bowie was the poster boy for glam rock. Mark Bolan from T-Rex was a quintessential glam rocker. Sweet were a glam rock group. Slade were a glam rock group. Disgraced rocker Gary Glitter was a glam rocker. Not disgraced Alvin Stardust was a glam rocker. The lovely Susie Quattro was a glam rocker. I had the great privilege of interviewing Miss Susie Quattro 10 or 15 years ago, and she was a complete delight, so she's become a bit of a role model. Roxy Music, at the beginning of their career, were billed as glam rockers. Elton John, at least his sartorial presence on stage, was glam rock, as was Freddie Mercury's. As you can see, there was an awful lot of difference in music amongst these so-called glam rockers, from that very formulaic, stompy, happy pop sound uh, written by Chin and Chapman for bands like Sweet and Susie Quattro, to the far more sophisticated musical stylings of David Bowie, rock music and of course that lovely pop of Elton John but what ties all of these people together is their stage costumes which of course would filter down to streetwear. All right the glam rockers were very inspired by 1950s B sci-fi movies. They were inspired by Elvis and they were also inspired by the sequins and feathers of Golden Age Hollywood. Guys wore makeup, and this tied into the androgyny of glam rock. Sometimes the makeup was extremely theatrical, and sometimes it was just a bloke with eyeshadow on. This is Brian Ferry, not trying to look androgynous, just being a glam rocker. Glam rock was fun and it was positive. It was all about glitter and sequins and feather boas. Some of the motifs you see in glam rock are stars, lightning bolts, rainbows, hearts. It was really fun. There was also a lot of animal print incorporated. And you can't think about glam rock without instantly imagining all of these enormous platform heeled shoes and boots. I love these ones because they just scream glam rock, don't they? Ridiculously high and clumpy in glitter with the stars and the lightning bolts. So when you see an editorial like this today, yes, it is inspired by 1970s glam rock. As is this, as is this, and on the runway, glam rock, glam rock, glam rock, all of it from the 1970s. And now we have to jump forward an entire decade to an era when there was no glam rock. Let's meet 
the New Romantics. New Romanticism was a movement that again came out of England, but this time in the early 1980s, a full decade after glam rock. It was a reaction to the incredibly dismal economic landscape of Thatcher's Britain, which saw an awful lot of young people unemployed. The problem with New Romanticism is that it is a very large umbrella, and also every New Romantic band denied being a New Romantic band. However, it was a genuine street style movement as well. These are the Blitz Kids. Who are the Blitz Kids? These were young people, many of them unemployed, who frequented the Blitz nightclub in London and dressed like this. It was this really theatrical, overblown dress up. These kids would spend hours getting ready to go out at night. It drew on many different influences and inspiration, but what united every new romantic look was layers and sashes and scarves and a lot of lace and frills and accessories and men with makeup on. This is perhaps one of the reasons people confuse it with glam rock, this slightly androgynous vibe. People say that the phrase New Romantic was first heard in the Duran Duran song Planet Earth, although perhaps the phrase had been bandied around already and Duran Duran just picked up on it. There were an awful lot of puffy blouses and sashes and brooches incorporated in New Romanticism. This is the band Spandau Ballet, who I am sure denied being New Romantic too, although they definitely were in my opinion. Adam and the Ants also denied being New Romantic, but you couldn't get more New Romantic than Adam and the Ants with their 20th century take on 17th 18th century pirate wear. This is Annabella Lewin from the band Bow Wow Wow with her Vivian Westwood pirate hat and her hair all tied up in these ribbons. Culture Club fall under the umbrella of New Romanticism too. But so do Flock of Seagulls, and their look was really more drawn from the American New Wave sartorial statement of the late 70s and early 80s. So you see what I mean? There's a lot going on in New Romanticism, but there are certain things that really do tie it all together. Let's look at the New Romantic influencers. They were into pirates. They were also into Dada's performance art, the theater of the absurd. And yet they were also into Peruvian, Bolivian, and Chilean traditional dress. So there's a lot of things going on here, many of them combined. Men wore makeup. Sometimes it was very theatrical. But sometimes it was just a bloke with makeup on again. This is Phil Oakey from the Human League. And of course, Boy George really did a very beautiful, almost Vogue-like makeup, didn't he? This was high fashion. And so these are some of the reasons that some people confuse New Romanticism with glam rock. You dress up, make up, this kind of thing. But the two were very different, and they were very different in spirit. Because whereas glam rock was really fun and silly, the New Romantics took themselves very seriously. Unlike glam rock, there are actually some designers we associate with New Romanticism, most notably Vivian Westwood. Her World's End store in London is where she launched her pirate collection, and then a little later her Nostalgia of Mud store was the home of her Buffalo collection. Hair was very important to the New Romantics. You had to have extraordinary statement hair, like Phil Oakey's hair here, short on one side, long on the other side. This is a New Romantic haircut we will never forget. There was an awful lot of teasing going on, an awful lot of gel. But there were also some very structured statement haircuts, like the wedge that you see here. 
Annabella Lewin had the mohawk, but not worked in the punk way, all spiky on the top. The sides of her head were shaved, and then her hair was braided into pretty braids with ribbons. Boy George, of course, he had those pretty dreadlocks with ribbons, and some people went the full dread route. This is the band Hazy Fantasy. I never thought I would ever say the words Hazy Fantasy again. Just some of the signifiers and motifs of New Romanticism are the Vivian Westwood Squiggle print. It's called the Squiggle. And this is Annabella Lewin wearing a squiggle print tunic. Puffy pirate shirts. Historic hats like the tricorn hat or the bicorn hat. Sashes. Lots of sashes around the waist, baldricks around the body, and an awful lot of culottes. Teased big statement hair. A lot of accessories, armfuls of bangles. You needed a lot of bangles because when you danced, you had your arms up over your face in that kind of new romantic dance. And you were very serious. You never smiled when you were dancing. New romantics were serious. Of course, the scarf tied around the head. This was ubiquitous. I think Thatcher passed a law in the early 80s saying that every young person had to wear a scarf around their head because I certainly did. That is me in 1981, and I absolutely identified with the new romantics. Everything was dress up. Look at all that makeup and the teased hair and the earrings and the scarves. And this is me, what, 35, 37 years later? And I'm still dressing up. I can't just go out in a dress. No, I have to have gloves and a hat and matching shoes and matching necklaces and statement hair. And I really honestly and truly believe that all of this comes from my new romantic days. We are all very much imprinted, aren't we, with our first experiences in fashion. So if you see a 21st century fashion collection that looks like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, you can say, yes, this is inspired by the new romantics of the early 1980s, not by the glam rockers of the 70s. Well, I hope this episode of Speaking of Fashion on the Ultimate Fashion History has helped you sort out your glam rock from your new romantic and that none of us will ever again find ourselves riled when we read how Duran Duran were glam rock or Culture Club were glam rock or Flock of Seagulls were glam rock or the Human League were glam rock. And by the way, those hair bands of the 1980s weren't glam rock either. Glam metal and glam rock were two different things. If you ever find yourself riled by errors that people make in fashion history, drop me a line through my website, amandahalley.com, and I'll make a video. Join our Facebook group, The Ultimate Fashion History, on Facebook. We always have a lot of fun over there. I'll be back very soon with more on The Ultimate Fashion History, so just click the little circle to subscribe. And until then, thanks for watching and rock on.